take it away. We will discover the path of God. For we are waiting on you. For we are standing on your word. This morning, in the name of Jesus, your word has says them. They that wait on you, your, their strength will be renewed. Therefore, we wait on you this morning. And our strength is renewing you. 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 We will move on with you, God. We will move on in the name of Jesus. We will no longer be discouraged. We will no longer be weary. We will no longer be tired. 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 Lord, we receive strength from our people this morning. We receive strength from our people this morning. We receive your strength from every soul this morning. In the name of Jesus. Father, we receive strength from our people this morning. We receive strength from our people this morning. Lord, you begin to cause joy to arise in our hearts. We begin to rejoice. We will begin to rejoice. For this is for this will be our strength. We begin to rejoice. You will cause joy to come to our heart. You will cause those things that will rejoice our heart. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise this morning. Here I am to worship. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say.
Magnified in my business, oh God. Lord, I'm not letting you go until I see that difference. That difference that only you can do. I am not ashamed to say I need you. I'm not ashamed to say I depend on you. I'm not ashamed to say that without you I'm nothing. But with you, there is nothing that will be impossible for me to accomplish. In accordance with your will, oh God, I'm ready for the stage you want me to go. Help me. Help us. Let your name be glorified. We give you praise. In Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. I was invited this weekend to be at, uh, I can't remember the name of the church, but they had a program at Move. And the speaker was Godman Akinlabi. It was only when I saw him face to face, I remember I had known him many years ago when he was still with Sam Adeyemi. So we re reacquainted ourselves. But there was something he said that I want to leave with you. I didn't put it in my slide. And I thought it was really fascinating. He said, God rejoices when his children make apple juice because he didn't make apple juice. <laughs> he said God made apples, but it's his children that made apple juice. It's his children that made apple pie. There's something that gets God glad when we are like him in our creativity. Amen? 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 Uh, this weekend, uh, well, two days ago or so, we had, uh, there was a program on channels that featured our own Mr. Erabo and our pastor, uh, Olumide, which I'm hoping we can take a few glimpses at, at the network service. But it made me ever so proud of what this church is becoming. Amen? Uh, it's outstanding life and service to God, transforming, not, not the church, our world. You know, I've, I've said it many times that one day there will be cars from federal government and state government parked in front of church saying they are waiting for members of this church who need to go and solve a problem in Abuja, who need to go and solve a problem somewhere. It's going to happen in my lifetime and you're going to see it. Amen? You say, why? Because God knows what he's doing. Amen? God knows exactly what he's doing. Amen? Amen? You don't need to fast and pray about that. Just do what God tells you to do and you'll be fine. Amen? I didn't plan that. It's a plan he gave me. It's a picture he gave me. It's a revelation he gave me. I didn't ask for it, but I'm believing God for that. Amen? Amen. This morning, we're going to be taking this third, third alternative. Remember that the whole purpose of the, of, the, of the seven habits is to take us from being dependent to being independent and then finally to being interdependent even our bible tells us that one will put a thousand to flight and two ten thousand there's something about partnerships that we're still not getting or synergy that we're still not getting amen i'm hoping that some examples we share with you this morning will make a difference now uh, i'll show you the examples but for me to show you the examples i need to talk because when they're showing you the examples they don't tell you what created it so let's walk through this if you guys have given me a remote okay thanks uh, all right let's quickly just get a recap on what synergy is can you move forward it's not working all right Covey starts off by telling us that the third alternative is always a better way. There is always a better way of solving conflicts, of dealing with issues, of helping things not to, not 
Amen? I can't control this. Can you please fix it? And then, in the meantime, keep moving my slides. The third alternative, the third alternative transcends traditional solutions by forging a path to a third option. I've shown you videos about all this. It allows you to come out of that particular conflict or situation with a solution that satisfies even better than your expectations. Amen? Let's go on. I'm not, I'm not really reading the slides. It doesn't make any sense to do that. All right? There are many examples that are living examples that show us that we can create better solutions if we learn to appreciate our differences. And I give the... the as a matter of fact, I was shocked to find out that Mauritius, like Nigeria, a few years ago, they said they were, going to dis- they were going to be scattered. Even Singapore. Singapore doesn't just have different tribes. It has different nations in the same nation. It's, 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 it's okay for us to be Yoruba fighting uh, Igbo. But these people were Indians, you know what I mean, from different parts of the world. They learned to work together. And now they are super nations in terms of success. All right, but this is because we haven't found that conflict. But I don't want to focus on that this morning. Um, can we go on? Go back just one more. All right, all right. So let's walk through some examples. Is it working now? Thank you. Okay, good. I want to give you some stories. There's a company called Intellectual Laboratories. It's in, in, the chief investor in this particular particular laboratory is, is Bill Gates, as you all know. But he has a particular guy that he works with. His name is uh, um, I can't pronounce it. My host. I don't know where he's from. Very brilliant guy, uh, has uh, so many interesting things. He, he's really good, but he decided to focus on nothing on, but on things that will bless humanity, and so he will talk himself in a few minutes, all right? Now, what they did was they bring people from divergent backgrounds to solve important problems. One of those problems is how to get vaccines to developing people, to developing countries like Nigeria, to save millions of lives. These vaccines have to be kept cold at all times because they spoil or they become useless. And so what they did was they began to do a lot of experimentation, but they found out that even a few minutes of exposure to warm temperatures would destroy the whole shipment. It's going to say all this in a video in a few minutes. It's easy to do in developed nations because they know they have power all the time and so on and so forth, but we don't. So they had a particular peculiar problem. It's a big problem for us in the third world. To solve this problem, I want you to see what he brought together, which is what Synergy does. He brought, he brought in vending machine experts, coffee dispenser experts, and automatic weapons makers. Does that make any sense? He brings in this diverse group of people that don't almost seemingly have nothing to do with each other. And when they finished, they came up with an invention that looks like a thermos flask uh, where the vaccines are kept. That's the, the flask. You're going to see it in a minute in the video. For the vaccines to stay cold, the bottle cannot be opened. So they use a trigger to bring out the vaccines one by one, like dispensing a can of, so- of, of soda. To maintain the seal and keep the warm air out, it works like the bullet magazine of an AK-47. You see, you see what I mean? Taking different ideas from different places. Now... This low-cost contraption can keep vaccines for what? Six months. Joshua, that will solve a lot of your problem, won't it? Did you hear what I said? Six months. No power source. Doesn't need electricity. Doesn't need anything. They can keep it in that. Can you have in a refrigerator in your house that doesn't need Nepal for six months? Well, some of you will rejoice. But this is what he said. This is what Scovey said. He says, meanwhile, the two alternative thinking grids, politicians, business people, economists, continue to argue about how to provide stable power. And they begin to, about refrigeration, they begin to argue. Instead of saying, okay, this is our problem, this is our problem, how do we do what? Solve it. What is, and what is the alternative that we have not looked at because, you know, I hear it all the time. If only Nigeria has 24-hour power, my problems are over. Well, it doesn't. If only my father gave me a capital to start, I won't be in trouble. Well, he didn't. If only I went to university. Well, you didn't. What is your option? That's third alternative thinking. All right? All right? So I'm going to skip that. Now I'm going to skip all that. That's just me. Just... If you can imagine a room connecting soda machines, coffee pots, and AK-47, you have an idea of how these people work. 
And that's how we have to walk in this church. And that's how we have to walk with our colleagues at work. You must learn to listen to divergent opinions. You must learn. I met a pastor a few, uh, yesterday, or day before yesterday. He came to, uh, he, he met me in town. And uh, he, gave, he wanted to give me an invitation. And he said he forgot it was in his car. I said, why are you bothering to give me an invitation? Email it. He said to me, pastors feel that it's rude to email. I said, no. And I wanted to mind my own business. And I'm pretty good at that. But after a while, I couldn't let it out. I called him back and I said, how much are they charging you in Jogo? He told me, about half a million naira, but they're giving a 50% discount. I said, well, let's assume they didn't give you a discount. You're going to be spending half a million naira on a program, okay? And then maybe flyers, maybe the cost of running the program, another 500,000. I said, okay, after the program, what's going to happen? Oh, he was looking at me. I said, you are investing so much money, you haven't got an end game. I said, have you noticed movies? How many of you know when you're watching a movie, whether it's uh, whatever, a TV movie, they always give you what they call a cliffhanger. They finish solving a problem and then they create a new one so that you can come back next week. Come on now. It's part, it's a trick. It's an idea to keep you. I said, you can't spend a million naira on a program and not have a follow-up thing. You must have a follow-up plan. You must, you know what I mean? He just said to me, he said, it just didn't occur to him. Another gentleman came to see me and said, he wants to, he wants to start a, a hall. He, he spent 30 million naira building it. He's looking for investors. I said, let me tell you something. I said, the bridge network pays about 3.6 million naira a year, right? 300,000 naira a month. I said, but do you know that our diesel cost is 4 point something million? I said, you think building is easy? I said, in Nigeria, to build is easy. It is running it that is more expensive. I said, you are focused on building the thing. You forgot you're going to pay diesel. You're going to do this. I said, what are you bringing in? Where are the solar panels? Where is the water treatment plant? Where is the farm? Where is this? And the guy just said, look at me. Meanwhile, this guy is from America. If you don't bring people with divergent views into your life, you won't see your opportunities. The most of you hide your ideas in your chest. I said, when I bring it out, they will see. You won't see nothing. Let's go on. Pastor Mishore, please give it to Pastor Mishore. Mosquito laser. Pastor Mishore managed to help me get the movie that I've been hoping they'll bring to Nigeria, which is the movie about Hillsong. He managed to help me get the movie. I don't know how he got it. If they want to arrest anybody, it's Pastor Mishore, they will arrest. So I'm, I'm publicly saying that I, I, I don't know about the source. <laughs> but <laughs> what we want to do is get the movie together and show it to Pass to, to choirs in the country, who, in the city, who might want to, in a full fledged uh, cinema, cinema with air conditioned popcorn and the whole works. So, I want somebody who's going to help me plan that. I don't have time to do it. All right? Mosquito laser. How many of you know about how bad mosquito is killing us in this country? 250 million people die a year. Malaria is spread by mosquitoes. All of you don't know this. They use DDT to control it for a while. All right? There was a book in 1962 by a woman called Rachel Carson called Silent Spring. She told her of the dangers of DDT, so they stopped using DDT. Immediately, they banned DDT. Mosquitoes came back fully. All right? Politicians took sides. Some argued that DDT ban is not good. Some people said it was, it's, it's benefits away, this risk, and so on and so forth. Two alternative thinking. Do you see it? Huh? This same group came together. This same group we're talking about, Bill Gates and Melinda Foundation. They brought people of different backgrounds. They included medical researchers, insect psychologists, software and software engineers, even a rocket scientist. In the spirit of synergy, the alternatives flew. It was rocket scientists that suggested that they should use a laser to shoot down mosquitoes. Everybody laughed. Use a laser to shoot down mosquitoes. You guys don't want to laugh because you know I have an ace up my sleeve, Abby. Abby? <laughs> Something like that. To kill mosquitoes because you know this is illustrated. All right? Well, let's see if they succeeded in doing it. Play. We invent. 
uh, my company invents uh, all kinds of new technology in lots of different areas. And we do that for a couple of reasons. We invent for fun. Invention is a lot of fun to do, and we also invent for profit. The two are related because the profit actually takes long enough that isn't fun, you wouldn't have the time to do it. So we do this fun and profit-oriented inventing for most of what we do, but we also have a program where we invent for humanity. We take some of our best inventors and we say, are there problems where we have a good idea for solving a problem the world has? And to solve it in the way we try to solve problems, which is with dramatic, crazy, out-of-the-box solutions. Bill Gates is one of those smartest guys of ours that work on these problems, and he also funds this work, so thank you. So I'm going to briefly discuss a couple of problems that we have, uh, and a couple of problems where we've got some solutions underway. So, vaccination is one of the key techniques in public health, a fantastic thing, but in the developing world, a lot of vaccines spoil before they're administered. And that's because they need to be kept cold. Almost all vaccines need to be kept at refrigerator temperatures. They go bad very quickly if you don't. And if you don't have a stable power grid, this doesn't happen. So kids die. It's not just the loss of the vaccine that matters. It's the fact that those kids don't get vaccinated. This is one of the ways that uh, vaccines are carried. These are styrofoam chests. These are being carried by people, but they're also put on the backs of pickup trucks. We've got a different solution. Now, one of these styrofoam chests will last for about four hours with ice in it. And we thought, well, that's not really good enough. So we made this thing. This lasts six months with no power. Absolutely zero power because it loses less than a half a watt. Now, this is our second generation prototype. The third generation prototype is right now in Uganda being tested. Now, the reason we were able to come up with this is, is two key ideas. One is that this is similar to a cryogenic doer, something you'd keep liquid nitrogen or liquid helium in. They have incredible insulation, so well, let's put some incredible insulation here. The other idea is kind of interesting, which is you can't reach inside anymore. Because if you open it up and reach inside, you let the heat in, the game would be over. So the inside of this thing actually looks like a Coke machine. It vends out little individual vials. So a simple idea, which we hope is going to change the way vaccines are distributed in Africa and around the world. Uh, we'll move on to malaria. Malaria is one of the great public health problems. Um, Esther Duflo talked a little bit about this. 250 million people a year. Every 43 seconds, a child in Africa dies. 27 will die during my talk. And there's no way for us here in this country to grasp really what that means to the people involved. Uh, another comment of Esther's was that we react when there's a tragedy like Haiti, but that tragedy is ongoing. So what can we do about it? Well, there's a lot of things people have tried for many years for solving malaria. You can spray. The problem is there's environmental issues. You can try to treat people and create awareness. That's great, except the places that have malaria really bad, they don't have healthcare systems. A vaccine would be a terrific thing, only they don't work yet. People have tried for a long time, there's a couple of interesting candidates. It's a very difficult thing to make a vaccine for. You can distribute bed nets. And bed nets are very effective if you use them. You don't always use them for that. People fish with them. They don't always get to everyone. And bed nets have an effect on the epidemic, but you're never going to make it extinct with bed nets. Now, malaria is an incredibly complicated disease. We could spend hours going over this. It's got this sort of soap opera-like lifestyle. They have sex, they burrow into your liver, they tunnel into your blood cells. It's an incredibly complicated disease, but that's actually one of the things we find interesting about it, why we work on malaria. There's a lot of potential ways in. One of those ways might be better diagnosis. So we hope this year to prototype each of these devices. One does an automatic malaria diagnosis in the same way that a diabetic's uh, a glucose meter works. You take a drop of blood, you put it in there, and it automatically tells you. Today, you need to do a complicated laboratory procedure, create a bunch of microscope slides, and have a trained person examine it. But then we're thinking, you know, 
It'd be even better if you didn't have to draw the blood. And if you look through the eye, or if you look at the, the vessels on the white of the eye, in fact, you may be able to do this directly without drawing any blood at all, or through your nail beds. Because if you actually look through your fingernails, you can see blood vessels. And once you see the blood vessels, we think we can see the malaria. We can see it because of this molecule called hemozoin. Uh, it's produced by the malaria parasite. And it's a very interesting uh, crystalline substance. It's interesting anyway if you're a solid state physicist. There's a lot of cool stuff we can do with it. This is our uh, femtosecond laser lab. So this creates pulses of light that last a femtosecond. That's really, really, really short. Um, this is a pulse of light that's only about one wavelength of light long. So it's a whole bunch of photons all coming and hitting simultaneously. It creates a very high peak power, and it lets you do all kinds of interesting things. In particular, it lets you find hemozoin. So here's an image of red blood cells, and now we can actually map where the hemozoin and where the malaria parasites are inside those red blood cells. And using both this technique and other optical techniques, we think we make those diagnostics. We also have another hemozoin-oriented therapy for malaria, a way in acute cases to actually take the malaria parasite and filter it out of the blood system, sort of like doing dialysis, but for relieving the parasite load. This is our 1,000-core supercomputer. We're kind of software guys. And so nearly any problem that you pose, we like to try to solve with some software. One of the problems that you have if you're trying to eradicate malaria or, or reduce it is you don't know what's the most effective thing to do. Okay, we heard about bed nets earlier. You spend a certain amount per bed net, or you could spray. You can give drug administration. There's all these different interventions, but they have different kinds of effectiveness. How can you tell? So we've created... Uh, using our, our supercomputer, the world's best computer model of malaria, which we'll show you now. We picked uh, Madagascar. We have every road, every village, um, every almost square inch of Madagascar. We have all of the uh, precipitation data and the uh, temperature data. That's very important because the humidity and precipitation uh, tell you whether you've got uh, standing pools of water for the mosquitoes to breed. So that sets the stage on which you do this. You then have to introduce the mosquitoes, and you have to model that, uh, and how they come and go. Ultimately, it gives you this. This is malaria spreading across Madagascar. And this is the latter part of the rainy season. We're going to the dry season now. It nearly goes away in the dry season, because there's no place for the, for the uh, mosquitoes to breed. And then, of course, the next year it comes roaring back. By doing these kinds of simulations, we want to eradicate or control malaria thousands of times in software before we actually have to do it in real life. To be able to simulate both the, the economic trade-offs, how many bed nets versus how much spraying, uh, or the social trade-offs, what happens if, there's, if unrest breaks out. Uh, we also try to study our foe. This is a high-speed camera view of a mosquito, and in a moment, we're going to see a view of the airflow. Here we're trying to visualize the airflow around the wings of the mosquito. We have little particles and we're illuminating with a laser. By understanding how mosquitoes fly, we hope to understand how to make them not fly. Now, one of the ways you can make them not fly is with DDT. Uh, this is a real ad. This is one of those things you just can't make up. Once upon a time, this was the primary technique. And in fact, many countries got rid of malaria through DDT, uh, the United States did. 1935, there were 150,000 cases a year of malaria in the United States. But DDT and a massive public health effort managed to squelch it. So we thought, well, we, we need to control, we've got all these things that are focused on the plasmodium, the parasite involved. What can we do to the mosquito? Well, well let's try to kill it with consumer electronics. Now, that sounds silly, but each of these devices has something interesting in it that maybe you could use. Your Blu-ray player has a very cheap blue laser. Your laser printer has a mirror galvanometer that's used to steer a laser beam very accurately. That's what makes the little dots on the, on the page. And of course, there's signal processing and digital cameras. So what if we could put all that together 
to shoot them out of the sky with lasers. <laughs> now, this is, in our company, this is what we call the pinky suck moment. <laughs> what if we could do that? Now, just suspend disbelief for a moment, and let's think of what could happen if we could do that. Well, we could protect very high-value targets like clinics. Clinics are full of people that have malaria. They're sick, and so they're less able to defend themselves from the mosquitoes. You really want to protect them. Of course, if you do that, you could also protect your backyard. And uh, farmers could protect their crops that they want to sell to Whole Foods because our photons are 100% organic. <laughs> they're completely natural. Now, it actually gets better than this. You could, if you're really smart, you could shine a, a non-lethal laser on the bug before you zap it. And you could listen to the wing beat frequency. And you could measure the size. And then you could decide, is this an insect I want to kill or an insect I don't want to kill? You know, Moore's law made computing cheap, so cheap, we can weigh the life of an individual insect <laughs> and decide thumbs up or thumbs down. Now, it turns out we only kill the female mosquitoes. Uh, they're the only ones that are, are dangerous. Uh, mosquitoes only uh, drink blood to lay eggs. Mosquitoes actually live, the, their day-to-day -day nutrition comes from nectar, from flowers. In fact, we, in the lab, we feed ours raisins. Um, but the female needs the blood meal. So, this sounds really crazy, right? Would you like to see it? Okay, so our legal department prepared a disclaimer. And here it is. Now, after thinking about this a little bit, we thought, you know, it probably would be simpler to do this with a non-lethal laser. So, Eric Johansson, who built the device, actually with parts from eBay, and Pablo Holman over here, he's got mosquitoes in the tank. We have the device over here, and we're going to show you where, instead of the kill laser, which would be a very brief, instantaneous pulse, we're going to have a green laser pointer that's going to stay on the mosquito for actually quite a long period of time. Otherwise, you can't see it. Very well. Take it away, Eric. What we have here is a tank on the other side of the stage, and we have this computer screen can actually see the mosquitoes as they fly around. And Pablo, if he stirs up our mosquitoes a little bit, we can see them flying around. Now, that's a fairly straightforward image processing routine, and let me show you how it works. Here you can see that the insects are being tracked as they're flying around, which is uh, kind of fun. Next, we actually can light them up with a laser. So now this is a low-power laser, and we can actually pick up our wing beat frequency. So you may be able to hear some mosquitoes flying around. That's the mosquito wing beat you're hearing. Well, finally, let's uh, see what this looks like. There you can see mosquitoes as they fly around being lit up. This is being slowed way down so that you have an opportunity to see what's happening. Here we have it running in high-speed mode. So this system that was built for TED is here to illustrate uh, that it is technically possible to actually deploy a system like this. And we're looking very hard at uh, how to make it highly cost-effective to use in places like Africa and other parts of the world. So it wouldn't be any fun to show you that without showing you what actually happens when we hit them. This is very satisfying. <laughs> this is one of the first ones he did. The energy is a little bit high here. <laughs> a little loop around here in just a second. You'll see another one. Here's another one. Bang. And an interesting thing is, we kill them all the time. We've never actually gotten the wings to shut off in midair. The wing motor is very resilient. I mean, here, here we're, we're blowing wings off, but the wing motor keeps all the way down. So, that's what I have. Thanks very much. What do you think?
you see how we limit ourselves sometimes? A young man came to see me the other day. He said he wanted a keyboard. I should give him money. I said, well, I don't have money to give you. I said, let me give you a few options. You can go and steal one. But what are the consequences of stealing one? You get to jail. I said, two, you can go around and ask people for second-hand keyboards that are not working. And they give it to you for free. If you go fix it, you'll need half the price. If you sit down and think sometimes, you come up with solutions you never thought about before. We're saying no, we're church, so let's, and we're saying all this stuff. Is there a thought an alternative in the Bible? You think this is a concept that is scriptural? Anybody think it's a concept that's scriptural? The very foundation of our faith is the third alternative. In Ephesians chapter 2 verse 14, it says, He himself is our peace who has made both one. He has broken down the middle wall of separation, having abolished in his flesh the enmity that is the law of the commandments containing the ordinances, so as to create in himself one new man from where? Two. The Jew and the Gentile. In this world, you're either a Jew or you're a Gentile. And God says, you know what? This new world that I've created, there's not going to be any Jew there's not going to be any gentile. I am creating a new man, a third person. Even our faith is based upon this third alternative. Think about it for a minute. One of the things God taught me when I was young as a Christian, he says there's the right way, there's a wrong way, and then there's God's way. No, no, in other words, if somebody slaps me, I'm going to show you that in a minute. There's a man called Walter Wink. I'll come back to it. Look at what he says. You've heard what it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, do not resist an evil door. If anyone strikes you on the lax, on the on one cheek, do what? Turn what? The other cheek. Pastor, Pastor Lodera, can I can I borrow you for a minute? Most of you don't understand this concept. All right. Do you notice that the Bible is very specific about which, which, which cheek you're supposed to strike on? Which one is it? Right. For me to strike Pastor Ladero on his right cheek, I'm not going to slap him like this. I'm going to slap him with the backhand, which is an insult. That's the concept. You see, you, know, you see that? I can't slap him with the right hand like this. When you slap somebody with the left hand, it's a, it's a disregard for them. You're telling them they're useless. Am I making sense? So when somebody, Jesus says, don't respond to them by slapping them back. Tell them that you are their equal. Gives you an authority. Thank you, sir. Am I making sense? Look at what he says next. If anyone wants to sue you and take your court, give him your clothes as well. Let me, let me make this a little bit interesting. Shortly before the fall of apartheid in South Africa, police descended on squatter camps and they had, they had long wanted to demolish. They gave the women five minutes to gather their possessions and that the bulldozers would level their shacks. The women, apparently sensing that residual whatever streak around the Africans, they stripped naked before the bulldozers. The policemen turned and fled. In other words, you want to take my house? Who could just take everything? Third alternative. Don't fight them. Say so you want everything, take everything. Lot did it. With Abraham did it with Lot. Abby, two of you are fighting over property. You're fighting over shares of a company. It's okay. What do you want? Take. It's almost like it's a lesson we don't want to learn. We fight like unbelievers. We do things like unbelievers. We do stupid. You know for what? For money. One thing I've sworn in my life I'd never do is fight over money. I fight you over many things, but money, no. You know, the, there's a third one there. You saw it. I don't want to go too far. It says, if anyone forces you to go one mile, do what? Second one. 
What does it mean to go the second mile? What does it mean to go a second mile? Somebody's taking advantage of you. You say, okay. You really want this? You know what I mean? <laughs> After that, you say, anything else I can do for you? <laughs> you, 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 you turn his head. You confuse him. Because you're not doing what is predictable. You're looking for a third alternative. There is no situation you find. Who told you that there are only two alternatives in marriage? Divorce or staying together? <laughs> There's still a third alternative. I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I really want to end on a creative note. Look at what he says here. He says, these people have lived using that. Gandhi, Martin Luther King. I'm only choosing those you know. All these people here have succeeded in doing whatever they wanted to do by finding a third way of solving problems. What are we going to do about it? I think I'm running out of time. I've run out of time. I think that's the last slide, I think. Yeah, it's the last slide. On you coming for a program because you can afford... I don't know if you get the point I'm making. If we can come up with a program that everybody can be equal, well, let's not do it. But we just... There are people... They're designing apps for, for people who can afford to buy apps. Meanwhile, the poor have so much needs around them that we can solve. Look at what he said. They have, a, they have something that will tell you you have malaria by just looking into your eyes. They don't have to prick any blood. Do you know that there's a particular malaria drug that when it arrives in Nigeria, is about 50 kobo. By the, I think by Bill Gates Foundation. Do you know how much they sell it? The average Nigerian sells it now, almost 500 or something now. We, they are trying to help our people and we are making money out of it. And there are Christians involved in this thing. Please, rise up. Let's pray. Can we just stand? You, you got to believe. I have to believe. Now, whatever I'm doing now, there's a third way. Whatever I'm stuck in right now, there's a better way. You know, I tell people all the time, get, let your children go abroad. Give them an opportunity. Say, I don't have money. Well, I didn't ask you whether you had money. Just give them the chance. As soon as we announce the, the program, uh, what they call it? The... Uh, we have three camps this year. One of the ladies got up and said to me, I don't have money to take my daughter, but I want my daughter to, 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 to attend. I don't have money to pay. I said, okay. What do you want me to do? Well, I know what she wants me to do, but I want to hear her say it. So I said, okay, you know what? There are two camps. There's one for girls. There's one. Which one do you want your daughter to attend? So immediately I called the people who are, who are doing the ones for women. And they said, okay, they're going to give five scholarships. But they have to go through a course. Now, if she didn't ask, I don't know if you get the point I'm making, for a way. You know, if she, she didn't ask whether there was a way for her to get into the program, I wouldn't think about it. science they will take, as soon as they deliver one baby, they won't wash their hands. You don't know how backward we were a hundred years ago. The same hands they used to deliver one child, they would carry the disease to another child and deliver another one. And the mortality rate was like 90% of the people they were giving birth to were dead. This guy got up and said, wash your hand. They said, no, what's wrong with you? What do you know about medicine? Wash your hand. He kept, he fought. Then they finally gave him a hospital. He fought, 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 fought. And finally, he started teaching how to wash her. The mortality rate dropped down to about 30%. They were, they were over. The man died of infected disease. 
There's another man in the UK. You, you, you think Nigerians are bush? Go and see the British 200 years ago. As we shit on the road, that's how they were shitting on their own road. Oh, you don't know. You, you think they're civilized? You think civilizations happen like that? Somebody made a sacrifice. They were shitting. Their sewage system was coming all over the place. People were dying. It was called the Black Death. This engineer got up and said, no, we must build tunnels. We must bring septic tanks. We must do this. They nearly killed him. Parliament said no. They nearly killed him. Finally, after his death, they implemented his plan and the disease stopped. What makes you think it's going to be easy for you? Because you are born again? Talk to God this morning, I beg you. And I'm open, I'm open to where you want to take me. I'm open, Lord. Or yield. No, that's not it. There's a third way. You're oppressing in your office, there's a third way. Your business is not growing. There's a third way. Father, help me to find it. Help me to find it, oh God. Help me to find it. I yield to your spirit. I lay aside my pre. My pre the Bible says, lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways, acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Father, to stood before the Red Sea they could not go forward and there was an enemy at their back they could not go backwards the moment Moses shifted his gaze from the sea and from the enemy the Egyptians to God there was the third alternative What crossroad are you this morning? 
that you seem not to be able to go forward and you can't go backwards. Listen, you need to shift your gaze away from those things and shift, move your gaze to God. Because he's the only one by his spirit that can remove that limit over our lives that we think that when we reach a brick wall, that that means it is impossible. I just want us to just talk to him this morning. For some of us, it is that that wall of limitation should be broken down in our lives, in our minds. Some of us, how many business have we tried again and again and again and again and again? And when we, you know, Bishop Oedipo was saying something about vision, he says that those who meet a brick wall as we get into a vision and run away from it to start another one, they are not ready to accomplish anything yet. Oh, Father, we ask of you this morning. By your spirit, break every limit, every limitation, every limit, every limit in our minds. Oh, Father, we pray that we pull down every stronghold, every stronghold of impossibility. Every stronghold of impossibility in our minds. Father, we break them down this morning. And Lord, we shift our focus on to you. Because you are the way maker. Because where there seems to be no way, you always create a way. Oh, Father, because you are light in the darkness of this world. That even with the darkness around us you know yesterday we were at, uh, at a short committee meeting of the men's group discussing about the the new investment platform we want to set up and uh, there was something about pastor parkways yesterday he was just saying that we can't do investment we can't do business the way the world is doing it if it is the way the world is doing it there, there's no point it's just good for us to just join what they're already doing because we were everybody was we were coming up with different ideas we we're saying that oh you borrow people money they default they won't pay and he said we just need to come up with a different model father we ask that our eyes of understanding will be enlightened even in the place of our work, in the business that we run, and the ministries that you have committed into our hands, that Lord, we will see your way, your way of doing things. And Father, we will acknowledge it, and we will walk in it. It's always good to give to God. You know, oftentimes we tell ourselves, when we give, which is actually the truth, you always get in return. But sometimes you also need to give without expecting a return. It's a different dimension, but ultimately you will still get a return. Absolutely. And I want to tell you that what you are given is to support the vision. We pray that in return, you will indeed visit us. Father, even particularly this morning, as we wait upon you, as we look up to you, and as we cry unto you for that breakthrough, Lord, in the name of Jesus, we declare that it will come to fruition, that it will be perfected in glory in the name of jesus we give you praise oh god in jesus name we pray amen you know this morning i want to do the first time as stuff a little bit differently just look beside you 
just look at the person sitting beside you. If the person's face seems strange, ask the person, are you a first timer here this morning? Just look around. Look around. Just as if the person is a first timer, just stand up with that person. If the person is a first timer, just rise, rise with that person. If the person is a first timer, or if the person is a second timer. So, okay, he has been here before. Because even me, I'm seeing a strange face in, in church this morning. You've been here before, sir. Not your wife. No, I'm actually addressing... You've been here before. Oh, it's a strange face. Sorry about that. But anyway, we 